2015, an elite DFS Army Commando unit formed to bring high-level DFS strategy to the masses. Today, hated by DFS sharks and lineup sellers alike, they continue their quest to turn Joe into DFS Pro. Welcome back to the DFS Army Bold Call Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Sislowski, also known as Season Long Says. Today, you'll notice that I don't have my broadcasting partner with me, Kevin the Geek, Kevin Allen. But I have brought two guests, very special guests from the new podcast, The Flex Network, on with me. I'm going to introduce them one at a time, and I'll start with Mr. Matt Beck, who's been on the podcast before. Welcome back, Matt. Hey, says thanks, brother. Hey, today we're going to let out a little tiny nugget of our Flex Network flexing on everybody. Flex on them draft strategy this year. Home league draft strategy. I'm not trying to appeal to to guys like you, says who who know way more than I do. I'm trying to appeal to your everyday guy, your average Joe in fantasy football. I'm trying to give them a strategy uh, to win in their home league. So thanks for having us on today, and uh, really appreciate really appreciate you coming on our cast too. So this is a double up feature. This yeah, is a free what, feature presentation here today. And what Matt's talking about is that we're going to do a simulcast. This is also going to air on the Flex Network, and this is a perfect time to introduce his podcast partner one of again the most passionate fantasy football players up and coming analysts out there mr shane seely say hello what's going on gentlemen how are you shane is actually uh he is responsible for making this podcast an international podcast as he sits in canada so now right. we have and the maybe the first ever three time zone podcast as we are east coast <laughs> mountain time and we also have a west coast time represented so welcome on shane i'm looking forward to hearing uh, you. how you how you approach redraft strategy uh but today what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh if you've been following us on twitter uh, I, I participated in a high stakes NFFC Rotowire online championship draft where I participated with a, a panel of experts, including Chris List from Rotowire. And Shane and Matt have had a chance to analyze the draft. And I'm going to start with Shane. You know that this is a three wide receiver, PPR, and a flex draft. What did you make of the first couple rounds? Did anything stand out to you uh, in, the, in this draft right here that you saw? Yeah, well, okay. So I would say, first of all, we should outline that you started in the 11 spot, which is an interesting spot because a lot of people are taking the approach of a wide receiver, wide receiver when they go in the, on their, uh, at the end of the first round and then at, at the start of the second round, which is exactly what you did. So you ended up getting Odell Beckham and Antonio Brown. So I would say that at a high level, I mean, there weren't too many surprising picks. In the, in the first round. I mean, you guys did it earlier this week when it, w- it had been a couple of days since the actual Tyree kill announcement. And um, the guy on the, tw- on, in the 12 spots on the turn ended up taking Tyreek at the 2.1. So I think that that, I mean, it's not a surprise you, I would say, but you know, it's, it, I think that's going to be where he's going to be going pretty consistently. <laughs> Well, if anyone also wants to follow along with the draft, uh, I pinned it to my Twitter account, at Alan Sislowski. All you need to do is just go on there, click the link, and you can follow along the draft. I picked at pick 11. Okay, uh, going over it. Thanks. That's really good um, analysis. Hey, real we'll quick, it. says, says well, I think we need to really let people know that this is not just no normal draft. This is um, uh, beat Chris Liss, or is, is that – so we had like a um, – Go, I mean, go ahead. I don't want to steal your thunder. You no, had no, a no, real no. analyst. You had a real analyst here uh, drafting, I, I I believe, at the, the one hole from Sirius XM, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was a panel of experts. There was uh, a handful of really experienced drafters. So, you know, Chris, who you named, he was on in the one spot. But the rest of them, uh, some of them have, a, you know, grand totals of multi-thousands of dollars of winnings. So they may not be uh, have name recognition from radio and podcasts, but these are heavy players in, in the NFFC high-stakes industry. So with that said, 
Uh, was there any early round surprises from you, Matt? What did you think of uh, of how the first couple rounds went down? I mean, there wasn't any early round surprises, I would say. I mean, uh, to me, early rounds in the first two rounds, I think once you get into the third and fourth round, um, I think that there was some some really uh, big surprises. I, I think, uh, obviously, <clears throat> it's pretty consensus um, that if you're at the tail end of the first round this year, you're, you're just going to have to go wide receiver, wide receiver. Um I think that's a consensus, you know, in our draft strategy that, uh, that Shane and I on the flex network are trying to weasel our way around is that we're actually going to zag, uh, when the other zig, uh, I, I, we're, we're going to go no wide receiver in the first round. That's going to be our consensus just to kind of potentially push players down the line. But I think the biggest, uh, kind of the craziest thing in this is is george kittle goes in the fourth round i was round. gonna say yeah that's that's a steal and of course it went to chris Liss. right, right. All, all the guys <laughs> well now keep in mind for those looking at the draft this is a, a third round reversal draft which means that the first round was picked one through 12 then we went 12 through one in the second round and then the third round we start with the 12 spot again so if you're picking from the one spot normally you would pick first 24th and 25th but in this particular format if you're picking from the one spot you're picking first 24th and then 36th and 37th so yeah. so that that's but, an interesting piece right there but yeah that said Kittle did go in the first pick of the fourth round yeah which is like essentially after the third round reversal you get through the next 12 guys and then he's the the first tier on that next, you know, half of the draft. Well, why uh, do you think? Why do you think that is, Shane? What, you can jump in there because that's a good spot. What? What do you? Why do you think that Kittle fell? Do you think that after early season best ball, go get the tight end mania that maybe people are cooling? Is there any particular reason that you see that Kittle may have dropped to the fourth? I think that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's the the the, the debate about do we take a tight end early is it's kind of up in the air. I mean, I was in a best ball. This started just yesterday, and uh, Travis Kelsey went in. I think at, at pick number seven. Now this isn't; it's you know it's like a, a low dollar, low entry best ball on Draft.com, but you know it's still an indication that there are still some people out there, and it really only takes one or two people to go all in on the tight end. But I think that there's that sweet spot in around five to seven where you're getting like the OJ Howards, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram's that allow you to go and really bolster those those main um skill positions so so get your your foundation running back get your foundation wide receiver and then when there's kind of those question marks you know those like the tyler boyds of the world um even like a carry on johnson from a from a running back perspective that's where guys will go and say okay i think i'm going to go and take a tight end here which is likely going to be a, a higher end commodity so i think we're seeing that happen but I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I've done probably about 30 to 35 drafts. I would say this is one of the latest I've seen George Kittle go, period. So, and so yeah, it is quite surprising. Okay, so that's that's a perfect lead-in. So, Matt, when you – this the draft strategy that you've been promoting on Flex Network, uh, you've been coming up – I know you've been back testing a little bit, looking at current ADPs as they shift, and you brought up uh, that Kittle went late. How does this – sort of configure into your strategy. Maybe this is a, a good time to compare and contrast what I did in my uh, the analyst draft to what you see happening in first rounds. W what is the first round of your draft strategy going to look like? Yeah, so uh, good question. Thanks for asking. Um, we have George Kittle in the second round this year of redrafts. That's our strategy. We've been, we like you said, we've been back testing it. And I have, I'm, li I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to reveal the mock I'm literally doing right now here after I would say the next two picks go off the board, uh, which should be in about five minutes ish um, and, and let you know what our team looks like testing that strategy out. But um, we, we are actually going no wide receiver first round. And so if you do that, um, especially in an experts league draft, you really put people on their head. And I think that that is really what we're aiming to do here is we're aiming to maximize our opportunity. You're looking to pu punish the rest of the field. 
Exactly. And, and, <laughs> and when you do that, when you punish people, you make them have to make different moves than what their preset strategy is. And I think that that's exactly, you know, oh, oh, you know, uh, uh, New Orleans Saints are going to pass to Alvin Kamara all day. Look for Alvin Kamara on the wheel route, and then you get Alvin Kamara right up the middle all game. And so, you just you didn't game plan for it, so you just put them on their heads, you smack them, you lay them flat, and make them have to resort to their a backup strategy in order to draft. And I think that's what we're we're gonna aim to do this year in our redraft strategy is we're not gonna go wide receiver at the end. Breaking news: we're gonna go Damian Williams, okay, at okay. the end of the first round, Kittle in the start of the second round. Uh, if we didn't get David Johnson or McCaffrey in the first, you know, seven picks or whatever well, it is. So I'm just going to jump in there. So I think that's one thing that's really interesting too, is that, I mean, you look at George Kittle and I think he's pretty much the de facto number one receiving option in that offense right now. I mean, obviously Dante Pettis is there, but he still has, I still think he's got a lot of ways to go. And I mean, for, for all the people who are, who are looking at all the training camp news, I mean, there, there was a news alert today that said Trent Taylor is, in, is a 49ers top slot receiver, which, I mean, kind of like, yeah, Who? exactly, exactly. It's isn't like, it, Shane, isn't it amazing how those blurbs move the market? I mean, within That's minutes, what I'm saying. It's crazy. Yeah, with, yeah and, and now that everyone's on sleeper, I, I'm in, and, and I'm going to want you to get back to what you were just saying about the 49ers and Kittle, but it, just as a side note, I'm in a 14-team dynasty league within seconds Oh, boom. that Cash boom! Up. He's gone, which is again <laughs> it, to have a give me a free for all is 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 not for football. Like you need a bidding, a full bidding system. But yeah, give me bidding. all the freaking Debo Samuel, baby! I don't care yeah. if he's a rookie. Give him all because he yeah. is a monster and he's going to be the slot receiver in that team. What do you think that uh, Mark uh, Goodwin? I think is Debo's being... going to be the number two receiver. That's exactly what's yeah. going on. Well, somehow we. Not... Somehow we pivoted to the San Fran oh, passing, game, passing, catching game, which is fine. But do you guys remember that uh, Goodwin was uh, Jimmy Mark. G's favorite target? I mean, are we is he getting disrespected in these drafts? Well, you know what, Al? Like when this guy's talking about he wants to be in the Olympics and he's still training for the Olympics, I you know sometimes. But give some want, context on that. Not everybody understands what what that means. I mean, okay, so yeah. so Marquise Goodwin was a sprinter, and mm -hmm. so he's he's trying to get into what would it be the twenty twenty. Olympic Games? The, let's call it the next Summer Olympics. The, next, the next Summer Olympic Games. So it, this offseason, he has been training um, more of an Olympic sprinting type training regimen, which, I mean, I'm not a professional trainer, but to me, I want a football nerd on my team, right? I want a guy who lives, breathes, talks. That's it. Football, 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 football. I don't want these distractions. I mean, there was that, uh, that, that pretty well um, hyped up race where they did it, i think on like hbo or something like chad that, where, ocho cinco baby yeah he's good one <laughs> won the 40 yard dash tournament there you go chad just, ocho cinco developed i think he won like a million dollars it was a big deal it was and a big deal absolutely he did great i mean he's looking great why well, you're right is he getting disrespected he's completely getting disrespected I, especially since he was the primary target for uh garoppolo before he got hurt i just think that he uh, if i was to bet on a non-Kittle receiver to be valuable in fantasy, I, I'm looking at Marquise Goodwin, man. I, I just don't know why he's being disrespected. But I just want to get back to the draft strategy. I don't want to uh, to deviate too much here. You talked about uh, Damian Williams. Just a, a quick yes or no. Shane, you're on board with Damian Williams in the late first round? Do you want the truth? I, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I do. I'm, I do. I'm a little bit uncertain, to be okay. honest. All I'm right. uncertain. And so here, here's the follow-up though. Here's the, and then you can expound on that. Is that is it Damian Williams herself? Because it can't be the Chiefs' offense. Because what if I told you tomorrow that uh, you know Kareem Hunt was traded back to the Chiefs and there was no Damian Williams there? Wouldn't you take Kareem Hunt in that spot? So is it Damian Williams himself or is it the system? I would say no. It's probably Damian Williams himself. Okay. But to your to your point, I mean Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I mean he he excelled and he was a. Uh, late first round, early second round running back when he was in that Kansas City system simply because he's electric. And then everybody remembers what Damian Williams did. I mean, he punished me in the playoffs last year and cost me a championship because he just went off. And he he was one of those guys that if you picked him up off the waiver wire, he was a guy who won you a championship. And I think that a lot of people have that in their memories. The thing is, though, it's not necessarily – that I don't buy into Damian Williams. It's that there's other players 
in that area that I would probably be more comfortable with. Like I would take D- D- uh, Dalvin Cook over Damian Williams from a talent perspective. And the thing is, is that people are saying, okay, yes, the Kansas City offense is going to be more electric, but Minnesota wants to run the ball. And as much as you th- say that uh, that like a guy like James Conner has the risk of a G- Jalen Samuel, um, and I I love Jalen Samuel, so don't get me wrong, but I think that a guy like James Conner, he's done it last, he did it last year, you know, and that's the kind of offense where they do run it through the running back. And I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity. So that's, that's just a case where it's not so much that I don't love Damian Williams. It's that when you start stacking up those top 12 players in your top round, I wouldn't necessarily put Damian Williams in that category. Well, now, early know, second. Yes. Okay. So this is, you know, the, my co-host, uh, Kevin, the geek, he's going to be really happy with that call because he, li- this is the bold call podcast. So he likes bold call, but I'm more with Shane on this, that I would be a little goosey, a little nervous about putting Damian Williams in the first round. But Matt, I want to ask you a question based on that is, do you, do you agree that it's, well, you, you have Williams possibly in the first round. So you're all in on the chiefs backfield Would you would be even more excited if it was a proven premier back. Do you think in some way there could be some truth that Damian Williams is more of a system back and is Kansas city, a sneaky sort of bet to draft one of these 2020 amazing running backs for next year. So, so let's, let's really dive into that real quick. Cause, cause you asked the question, you know, is it Kareem Hunt? Is it Damian Williams? Or is it the offense? Okay, here's the thing. Okay, Kareem Hunt is one of the biggest pretenders in all of football. Okay, the guy has feature back size, sure, 5'10, 216, but his 40 is 4'62. Okay, he doesn't profile. I mean, his agility score was. 16th percentile according to player profiler uh his speed score according to his height weight uh averages 45th percentile now you look at the the system he did well in that system okay so what you're saying is the system elevated a guy that has four six speed and a bad agility score to a top eight running back or a top 10 running back in the league when he was young and didn't really understand the offense and had Patrick Mahomes as just a gunslinger uh, quarterback. You look at Damian Williams. Yeah, he hasn't gotten the opportunity, but when well, he, he did, did he, he got a, a a nice six or seven game sample. Six and, or and seven, he, and he was electric. And he agreed? thrived. Yeah, and he, and he thrived. He's 5'11", 222. His 40 was 445, okay? Almost two-tenths of a second faster with a speed score in the 80 or in the 95th percentile. All right. Okay. Here, here, here's the, here's the difference. I mean, we, you saw a couple seasons worth of Kareem hunt and he passed the eye test for me. He was able uh, to shake defenders in small spaces. He proved to be at very minimum, a plus pass catcher. I mean, I would even almost put him in, in the just sub elite category, but, and I'm anxious to see what he does in a new offense where he's uncomfortable and he's not the lead back, but uh, would you agree then either one of you can jump in here that Kansas city is a sneaky bet to draft one of those 2020 runners? Look, I okay. would, I would agree only based off the fact that Damian you're, you're. Williams, like w- right now we can say, Oh, he's a sneaky bet to draft s- someone right now. But if Damian Williams goes off, I, I think they definitely could hold off a little bit and go for winning the championship now because there's definitely some other holes in, in, in that team. But here, here's the thing about Damian Williams is we have a lot of ideas about who he is, what he can be, where he's from, what he's done, what he might do. What we're saying is that if Damian Williams had a full entire season based off the production that he had in the six games, he would be drafted in the first round. Agreed? Well, we're going to see it this year. Here's the thing, though, Matt. Okay, I'm just going to jump in here. He was hyper-efficient in these games. Like, I'm looking at some of the game logs from, from late last year. So, week 15, he had 10 carries, 6 targets, 6 receptions for a total of 123 yards and 2 touchdowns. In week 16, he had 16 carries, 7 receptions off 7 targets, 140 yards and a touchdown. I mean, that's that's super efficient, and it's a lot of targets. And 
I think that if he's going to be continue to be that efficient, then yeah, absolutely he could do it. But historically, when has a running back consistently been that consistent over the course of a 16 game season? And no, then no, further, Kareem just Hunt. going into that, uh, you look at Kareem Hunt though. <laughs> you look at his game log. He was he had a slow start last year. If you remember week three, week four, people were talking about is Kareem Hunt a bust? Like should we should we be trading this guy? Is he a hold or is he a sell? I mean that was just last season. And then as obviously as the season went on, he got a little bit better and he became more productive. But I mean, going back to your initial question says about, do we think that Kansas city is going to go after one of these running backs? I think absolutely. You know why? Because Damian Williams is 27 years old. And that's, that's another thing is that, okay, yes, he's coming from Miami, right? So in terms of an opportunity, like Miami, they're just, they just weren't able to maximize their, their players. That's just, that's just the bottom yeah. line. Right? I mean, and, and that, yes, I agree that we agree like, that that system was actually a negative on. All yeah, players. exactly. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Right. But historically the, when running backs production starts to decline is right around that 27 year old season. So I could see them pretty much, and this is an advantage for a redraft, right? Matt going, you know, supporting your, are you willing to draft him in round one? Um, they might want to just work him to the ground, right? Just maybe like ramp up his carries to, 18 20 carries a game give him five to seven targets a game and then next year you know chances are kansas city is going to finish pretty high which means you're going to have a late first round pick late second round pick oftentimes that's kind of the sweet spot if you want to go and get one of those top guys well but, i'll tell you, you know what this is reminding me of a little bit and by, and what you said there is is actually really is the take wait let me just give it is the takeaway from that that you're in on damian williams this year but you kind of agree that after this year all bets are off that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, that's that's smart then. I think that's a really good takeaway for the listeners is that don't be afraid of Damian Williams for 2019. But if you are a dynasty player, uh, it might be a good time to you know sell mid year. I don't think selling now. Let them even get earn that production and then and then sell them. But uh, here here's the question. This I guess this is um, it, it's kind of a smooth transition. I'm going to open this up to both of you. Okay, now I want you to think about this before you blurt, blurt out just the reactive uh, answer, and it has to do with when to draft Patrick Mahomes. Okay, if you're sitting there at the end of the first round, and I know that it's the obvious thing is don't take a quarterback early. Okay, we all know that. It's the most obvious thing to do in fantasy because when you could draft Josh Allen or Jameis Winston in the, in the 13th round, Ben Roethlisberger, it, your, your draft always looks better on paper. You know, uh, I think that's the obvious thing. But when you're sitting there at the end of the second round and the best options are, uh, you know, the, those Keenan Allen type receivers, uh, Stefan Diggs and Patrick Mahomes is sitting there staring you in the face. Is there ever a situation in a redraft league that either one of you are pulling the trigger? So, can I ask and go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to blurt this out. I'm going to say no, honestly, Al, like I'm not end of the second round. No, like, the reason I think the reason you're, you're asking this question is because in this draft, that's exactly why at I'm the end of the second round, that's Kick exactly where, where Patty Holmes went. And the it was reason 2.10, right? 210. Yeah. 2.10. Exactly. So to me, like he passed up Todd Gurley, of course. Yeah. There's some question marks there. He passed up Nick Chubb who, okay. I guess I should preface it by saying he has Christian McCaffrey. He picked, he got him into three spots. So the director at pick at pick two, who was it? It was pick two or pick, pick three. Pick, pick three. three. Yeah. And came around the second way and took Mahomes. Yeah, exactly. So he passed up Gurley. Okay, fine. There's some question marks. He packed, passed up Nick Chubb, who I think he's going to be amazing for the the start of the season. I mean, uh, even when Kareem Hunt gets back there, I, I don't, if, you know, if, if Chubb's productive, I don't see him take playing second fiddle. Maybe he loses a couple carries a game to keep him healthy through the playoffs, but they want to win games. And if, if Chubb's helping them win games, they're not going to pull him off the field. Yeah, Kareem Hunt won't actually. Not. Kareem Hunt won't be back until week 10. Most people are forgetting that there's an eight week suspension plus the bye week. So he won't even be eligible to play until week 10. Exactly. And anyone who thinks Kareem Hunt's just going to walk in and have 15 touches in the first week he's back. Remember during those eight, that suspension, he's not allowed to even be at the facility. Yeah, it's crazy. But here's, here's the number one thing you talk about late round quarterbacks in this draft, Russell Wilson went at pick 14.6 Russell Wilson. I mean, there's the argument. It's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane to me that 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 you would that you would go and spend such high draft capital. Now, I think to me, kind of the sweet spot where I would start considering it is right around that decision point before you're going for that second tier tight end. So let's call it early to mid round four. If I'm yeah. sitting in and round four, 
he won't last there in any drafts. You know, I, I've, you say that, but I've seen him fall. Now, granted, this is best ball, right? The, most of the drafts I've been doing have been best ball so far. But there's the odd draft here and there where he has fallen to the to the early to the fourth um, round. And I think that, that that's kind of that sweet spot where it's like, all right, am I going to be going Robert Woods or Brandon Cooks? Or should I go Patty Holmes? And yep. Patty Holmes to me is kind of the, the home run hit, right? Yeah, that's great. So, Matt, jump in there. Tell me uh, first about your comments on if Patrick Mahomes should ever be taken in the second round in your home redraft leagues and how that plays into your draft strategy for the second round. Well, so so let's get back into the idea that we're going to give you a little bit of this, a little tickling of the Flex Network redraft strategy, okay? Just a, just a tickle, There's Matt. Just tickling, a tickling, uh, tickling a of tickling. the pickling. Just a tickling of the pickling. Okay, listen. If you think that, for, okay, first of all, in home leagues, if you think Patrick Mahomes is getting to the end of the second round in home leagues, yeah, you're mistaken because in home leagues, people, people home are out on QBs way early. It's yeah. just what they do. We had, uh, just to echo what you're saying, is we put out our draft kit, the DFS Army draft kit, uh, this week, and the first question I got from, from a subscriber was, oh, so does that mean I should take Patrick Mahomes 1.1? So I, I, you know, so yes, you're right. He's probably not going to make it out of the the top 15 picks. He's not, but you know, when, and, 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 and when the flex network is saying, Hey, you know, uh, this is your home league draft strategy. I mean, here's the problem with saying that is the home league draft strategy does still kind of compute with semi decent drafters, guys that know what they're doing. Um, because why would you go out and find us via podcast if you weren't trying to raise the level of your fantasy acumen? Here's the thing about Patrick Mahomes is, yes, 100% would you take him in a home league at 2.10? Yeah, sure I would. Because we understand and know that in home leagues, even if you're an above average drafter, there are going to be guys that you know you can hit on later in the draft or whatever it may be where you're going to then just flex on everybody in your league. Um, I just want to talk about the, uh, the mock draft that I I'm literally in right now. I've, I've stopped it just because I wanted to, what, the team is of, so sick. Wait, what, when you say mock draft, are you using fantasy pro software? No, I, I don't like to use fantasy pros because fantasy pros mock drafts based well, on the, um, experts. Well, essentially. What, do you, what do you, yeah, they use ECR, which is expert consensus rankings. Exactly. What are you, what are you using? Yahoo. I like to use Yahoo because okay. you just get real people in there and, and real people who might be, you know, so good. Just, no, the bottom, I, I, you know, you're right. As long as, you, as long as you understand what, what software you're using and how that affects ADP. No, that's smart. You're using Yahoo. That's going to be more, like you said, home leagues, office home league. league. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, again, I don't want to like put this out there as we're trying to test this in your, your, the best leagues where you're spending 350 bucks as me and you talked before, you know, $350 is a lot of money, you know, for a lot of money, you might have to be a whole entire round on, on your number one guy, I, which is clearly. I go yeah, ahead. I don't think it matters the, the dollar amount of the league. I think it really matters the, the competition and Shane, you want to jump in on that? Yeah. Is that, so uh, I, I think that yes, Matt, you're absolutely right. That in home leagues, it's, it's becoming, you know, there's casual players, right? There's the people who aren't, obsessed with it i mean we kind of live and breathe fantasy football right now because we're just that cool but um yes. not everybody's like that right um the thing is though is that as much as we say that there's a casual like the casual players people have become more sophisticated right a lot of these people have been playing for years even if it's a casual league these people have probably been playing for three four five years i think even and longer i think they've been it's playing not long, absolutely yeah. Totally. Absolutely. And so I think that the, the industry is growing. And as the industry grows, players are getting smarter. Dude, and my grandma that, knows who Christian McCaffrey is, you know? They're, exactly. <laughs> she, exactly. She, she drafted so, him last year, you know? I think that we need to give people a little bit more credit in that saying, listen, I think that people know not to draft quarterback early. Not everybody. You know, that's 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 a hard one. But people will know your average person like the garbage Aaron Jones draft in the fourth round or the third round or the fourth, yeah. whatever, I whenever think, says well, did it. Just, just, to, just, to, to, just, to, give, <laughs> just to give context, what, what Matt is talking about was in that in that uh, uh, experts draft, I took Aaron Jones in the third round, the second pick of the third round after going wide receiver, wide receiver. And, you know, this is kind of, you know, not to, to deviate again what we're talking about, but Aaron Jones, to me, it strikes me as 
is one of the running backs that you can get in the third round that actually has a legitimate chance to be in the top five when it's all said and done. I don't think there's a lot of them. Uh, I think Leonard Fournette falls into that category too, based on the the uh, the uncontested workload. But I think Aaron Jones falls in there uh, in that category of players that could be in the top five based on talent and system. Uh, and if it all works out now, the floor is obviously a lot lower. I would I'd be curious to hear both of your opinion. If there's any other running backs in the third round or later that bo- that literally you think have a better chance to be in the top five than the market is thinking either one of you jump in on that well damian williams almost almost fits that category he, where, he doesn't go i don't i wouldn't put he him doesn't in go in the third round yeah. but he still fits the category where you're not yes. drafting him in the top five but he has top five upside around okay. later or so, a round or two later and, and i think right. we and I think we covered Damian Williams, and I agree. And I think we all agree that he definitely, just based on system alone. Is, is there anyone else that's that's legitimate ADP yeah. in the third round or later? To me, it's Marlon Mack. Mm. I mean, I know that there's, there's a lot of – Yeah, to me, it's, it's Marlon Mack. Like, a lot of people are talking about how he doesn't catch the ball and that he's on a three-down back. but That was going to be my counter. Yeah, I think that he can catch the ball. And I still think that, you know, how many opportunities is, are, is Indy going to have on the goal line? And I think he's just going to have so many opportunities to score the ball. So and this is going to be a team that's going to be consistently getting first downs as well, which means he's going to be on the field a lot. So there's Marlon Mack. And then another guy, I mean, you mentioned Leonard Fournette. Well, who, can I get, wait, before we get yeah, into it, I just, sure. want to count, I just want to counter Marlon Mack. Now, sure. I think Marlon Mack has a chance to be a top 12 running back, but I, I thought about this a lot. And, and the quick answer is that Naeem Hines, the rookie running back from last year, caught 60 plus passes. And I think to be in that top five, you need to be a 55 to 60 plus pass catcher in PPR. And because think about it, think about the the top four guys that are going there. They're all 70 plus catch running backs, including Zeke Elliott, who historically never caught passes. But last year they realized the NFL cheat code is to throw to the running Mm -hmm. backs, especially on early downs. So I think that, that's where Marlon Mack will have trouble. I'm not saying it can't happen because, yeah, he, he would be one of the top five favorites to lead the league in rushing touchdowns. But I, I that would be my um, that would be my counter to that that Marlon Mack probably has limited upside for top five based on the pass catching opportunities. But go ahead, who's another one that you think might belong in the top five that has a legitimate chance to be in the top five? Shane, that was for you, brother, because you were about to I mean, get in on here. I mean, he, he was so gung ho on a on a second guy, and I would have to say that that guy would be a Derrick Henry. I mean, look at the guy's production last year when he was actually fed the ball. Now he has the same type of downside as Marlon Mack kind of does have, where he's you know he's, uh, he's not a pass catcher, right? right? But if he's dominating in the run. And and look at Sean Alexander from back in the day. If the guy gets twenty five touchdowns, uh, yeah. Oh my Homer, God! Here we, go. we, we uh, just uh, went off the rails. It yeah. just off the rails. For, for, to give context, that uh, there is there is not a, a podcast that we've done together that Shane has not had to reel in Matt with his Seattle hometown oh. talk. So if, if we don't interrupt him, it, 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 that the Seattle talk could get uh, intoxicating. So I mean, he, is wearing, he is wearing a Golden State hat as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, no, yeah. Real, real off. Of, Too <laughs> soon. Too real, soon. That's right. Not soon enough. Not soon enough. <laughs> um, real, real off a couple more. Uh, just give me like two. Why don't you each start with Shane and go to Matt? Each give me two more guys that have a chance if things break their way that can end up in the I top. Five. A guy who's done it before, Devonta Freeman. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, he was number one. Uh, what was it? 2015. So he's been there before, and albeit that was like a historically poor season overall for running backs, but. I mean, assuming that he's healthy, and that's a big assumption because he has he he's has healthy struggled. Now. He's healthy now. He's healthy now. You know what? And that's all you can really bank on. I mean, uh, you talk about being injury agnostic, and I mean, look at t- just even today, Sterling Shepard, who, who guy has been you know relatively healthy, other than a few like hamstring injuries throughout his career. He broke his thumb today. It's football. It's going to happen. Anybody can get injured. But you know, you look at an offense with Atlanta who once again is is having already injuries before the season's even began on their defense, which means. They're going to have to be throwing the ball. They're going to have to – like the offense is going to have to produce. They they went out. They've invested in the offensive line. Um, I think that this is another offense that's going to take a step forward again this year. And I think that a guy like Devonta Freeman has a legit chance. Now, I, he is a little bit smaller, right? He doesn't exactly have that feature back size. But to me, he's done it before. It's a guy who's, to your point, can catch 50 to 70 balls – Plus, he can probably get twelve hundred rushing yards, and, and to me, no, that, 
And there's no Tevin Coleman there threatening his no. his uh, pass catching workload or so yeah I agree with that that's actually a really great pick and I think for the DFS Army season long uh, content listeners that that's um, Devonta Freeman is probably one of the best running back values outside of the top two rounds and I've even seen him go in the fourth. Why don't you rattle off one more quick one and then I want to hear from Matt and then I'll I'll close it out and then we'll we'll call that a pod and then we'll we'll continue this next time on uh, next week and we'll do it one more time. Okay, listen, so I, I wouldn't say necessarily that this is like a third round running back, but it's a guy who I think needs an honorable mention that, like I said, uh, third I mean, round or later, it could be later, third round or later. Look, the guy that I'm going, who's going now mid mid round seven in most drafts is Darius guys. Yeah. There's been so much fear with this guy. He tore his ACL a year ago in the preseason and he's back. He, he had, there was that report a couple weeks ago that he suffered a hamstring injury, but that report came out a couple weeks after the injury happened. He's in training camp. Um, just today on Twitter, there was, they were showing how he was, um, catching the ball with, uh, with Haskins, um, after practice. And he was, so he's out there, he's working, he's, he's working with the starters and don't give me this. Adrian Peterson is going to be the, the, what did, what did he say? He wants to rush for 2000 yards this year. I mean, yeah. get out of here with that, right? I mean, give me Darius Geis, and that, yeah. that guy can catch the ball too. Yeah, so I, think I think that Freeman and Geis are two guys that outside of the uh, the top 24 picks, that, le- that those guys have legitimate – those are great picks, uh, and, and they can be had at a bargain. And I think Peterson being there really depresses uh, Geis' redraft ADP, and it's, it's it's certainly depressed his his dynasty ADP as well. Well, I think just – you know, it, people are kind of – they're not very high on the on the Washington offense in general. So I yeah. think just all that combined means you're going to get a value. But I mean, that's the kind of guy that you might want to take, say, around early in round six, just to get him because he can be a legit number. I think he's probably going to be a legit number two running back. And he's the kind of guy that if you go wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, and you're just like, oh, crap, I need I need to get myself a running back. He's the kind of guy you can target and can be he's got a lot of upside if he stays healthy. All right, cool. That's that's a good pick. All right, over to you, Mr. Beck. Um, tell me, uh, there's a. I know you, you've you've done a bunch of the best balls now, and you have a great sense uh, from playing years of fantasy football. Who are the two running backs that you think have legitimate chance? Not just not just not just you have to squint to see it. Not if everything breaks right, but who are two running backs that we should target in our redraft leagues that could legitimately end up in the top five? Well, you know. Shane and I are the flex network. So Darius Geis is, is one of the answers. You can't ask the same entity, the same question and get, okay. and well, not have some convergence. That's so fine. one Gar- Darius Geis is one. I but say, the Geis is right this year. I promise the Geis is right. The Geis oh. is right. Wow. And, you know uh, what? I think we just came up with the title of this podcast. This is going to be the guys is right. Can I just, Dude. can I just throw one just really quick side story? Just sure. I think people will appreciate this. Um, so last year in my home league, um, I have a buddy who lives out of the country. So he was in town in, in mid August and we are doing our, our auction. We do a live auction together and we, uh, we were doing a live auction. And as the, the game, it was the Patriots versus Washington. I'm a Patriots fan for those who didn't know. Um, so I'm kind of watching it, but I stopped paying attention to the game and Darius guys gets, gets put up for bid. So I'm bidding, I'm going back and forth, back and forth with my buddy. Literally 10 minutes before this happened is when he <laughs> tore his ACL. I didn't know this. Nobody else is bidding except for me and this one guy. I finally, I'm like, no, I'm putting the hammer down. I'm getting this freaking guy. I ended up spending, it was like $31 out of a $200 budget. So it wasn't huge. Uh, that's 15% of your budget. Then, then it was like, okay, sold. Like, you know, like gavel goes down. And then everybody's like, no, you just signed the guy who tore his ACL. So, oh, my God. And so I, my team name was the Geis is Wrong last year. That's, uh, that, all right, that's good. That actually, yeah. that actually is a, a good story. I, I think, you know, it, that would be a good podcast also, a good podcast topic. What, what, who was the, let's talk about the players you drafted on draft night that got hurt that same night. Uh, I have a couple of those stories myself, but just to keep that, that's, I'm thank you for sharing that. And it also the podcast title will come out of that story, which is nice. Yeah. All right, uh, Matt, don't no more repeating. Tell me who, who your guy is. Who can I, who can the DFS army season long listeners draft? Uh, Sands round three, and they have a legitimate chance of getting a top five running back. So, so let's. Um, this is the end here. I'm going to unveil a, a little bit of of the mock draft that the strategy had been doing, who includes this guy. Okay, so 
with our mock draft strategy, with our home league strategy for the Flex Network, catch us on the Flex Network on Apple Podcasts or whatever else that you do and how you listen to podcasts, Twitter, Flex Network One, I think is our Twitter. But you, we're, we gonna give you, we're gonna give you a full promo at the end. We're gonna give you no a full Shane promo. can promo because I'm 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 just hype yeah, on this. Talk team. to me. I'm about to run. I'm about to run the neighborhood naked here. Okay. Here's right. what's here's here's how it, it hammered out. Tell me that you wouldn't believe you just get sick with this team. Okay. Wait, Patrick wait, hold on, Mahomes. Hold on. So you, I want to answer my question, and then I'm I gonna get hear. there. This is how I'm getting right. there. Okay? okay. Patrick Mahomes. QB1, Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, Damian Williams, George Kittle, Christian Kirk, Q- Kiki QT, Ronald Jones, okay, Jordan Howard, and but the guy who I'm going to answer right here, Miles Sanders. Yeah, okay. Miles Sanders has an opportunity if he plays 16 games this year to come out and break the mold of the committee running back situation in Philadelphia because he is that sick. He can do absolutely everything that a running back wants or or, or that, that a team wants a running back to be. He can catch the ball. He can break the runs to the outside because he's fast. He can block. And he is he is sick, okay? And the, the, the Eagles have been looking for a guy like him for quite a long time. I venture to say in the Flex Network draft strategy that Miles Sanders is one of the hottest commodities in our draft strategy just because everybody else wants to believe in this committee back system. They want it. Miles Sanders right, let, let is going. Uh, Miles Sanders is going right now in the seventh round. Where, where would you th- um, advise? redrafters in 2019 to take him if they if they want to make sure they secure uh getting him on the team so this is a commonality in our redraft strategy that we're going to be posting for people to see but it's um wait around if the guy that is like uh arbit- like if the arbitrage play if if they are the arbit- arbitrage play so like ideally kiki qt is the arbitrage to will fuller Right. And 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 Miles Sanders is the arbitrage of Jordan Howard. Like, so if their arbitrage play is still on the board, wait around. That's yeah. that's that's how we that's how we're doing it this year. Okay. And 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 that has worked for us. Cause like I said, look at the sick team that we got playing redraft this year. Mahomes, Godwin, Ridley, Dave, Damian Williams, Miles Sanders, George Kittle, Christian Kirk, Kiki QT, Ronald Jones. Okay, just to I give mean, you I want to give you I want to give you some context in that in that draft that we were reviewing, the one that's pinned on my Twitter. Um, Miles Sanders went in the middle of the sixth round. Now, again, those would be more experienced drafters, but I think that uh, there's there's going to be positive news about Miles Sanders all summer long. And uh, actually, in the dynasty rankings that we just put up today on the uh, the DFS uh, DFS Army uh, draft kit that's up there, uh, we we've maintained that we have Miles Sanders as our 1.1 in all dynasty drafts. We've had him there since uh, early on. And I know Josh Jacobs is likely to go as the one one in most dynasty drafts, but we we're in agreement with you here. Uh, if, if flex is, if you guys are pushing for Miles Sanders, then we're in lockstep because we have him again as our one one. We're we're advising people to take him early too. Um, the sixth round seems to be you, you should get him there, but I think his ADP will push up into into round five. You, you have any words on Miles Sanders, Shane? Yeah, well, no, I just, hold on, hold on, Shay. Sorry. In home leagues, though, Miles Sanders ain't going in the sixth round. Right, he's going yeah. to the seventh or eighth, well, and, no, and or ninth or tenth. I just, I, mean, I just looked at the at the NFC, NFFC average draft position since July first, so the last month or so. I would and, push it up. Do that from, from do it from the last five days because that's when days. he got because that's when he got healthy again. So All if right. you're gonna go back to July first, it's gonna be. 10th Let's do a round. week. Let's do July 18. Let, let me have a okay. look here. All right, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, no, that's right. fine. So 80, no, it's, it's pronounced the same. It's 84. So what's that? Right at the end. Uh, it's a seven eight turn, is what that is. Sort of by running backs. I'm curious where he's going amongst running backs. I think that's the more by running backs. Let's see here. Yeah. And, and the reason that's important is because it, it is in fantasy football, as we all know, it, it's not just where these players are going; it's where they're going in, in relative to other players at their position. 
if the room for some reason is waiting on running backs, if it's a wide receiver heavy draft, those overall ADPs will obviously get pushed down. So yeah, where is he's, the- he's running back thirty four? Okay, that's obviously and, way too low. Yeah, <laughs> and he's right at he's right behind our boy Darius Geis, who's number thirty three. Yeah. ADP ball, for Geis is eighty three. Yeah. ADP for Miles Sanders is eighty four. Yeah. So yeah, our so- job, yeah, our job. We know that we've done a good job. If you can, if you can get Darius Geis and Miles Sanders on your team. Yeah, year. that's that's great. So again, I just wanted to. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit because we're gonna do this again. Uh, as you know, I'm gonna have these guys on all season long. I'm gonna have the guys from the Flex Network, uh, Shane Seely and Matt Beck. They're gonna be coming back, and we're gonna be doing waiver wire podcasts. I'm gonna be on their podcast on the Flex Network. So just go to where your local, uh, wherever you get your podcast from and download the flex network and you can see they they're starting to build quite a library and you will see them again on here uh just tell them really super quick uh how they can get you on twitter yeah the so, flex network one baby the flex network one that's where you, we are and shane what's yours yeah you can find me at Seely s-e-e-l-e-y underscore shane cool really easy cool. Yeah, no, this was good. I, I always enjoy talking to you, and most of the, the the reason for that is because both of you are as passionate, if not more, about fantasy football than I am. And I think we're going to have a lot more of these conversations, and hopefully you'll come back on. Uh, the last time Matt was on, uh, we got a, a good amount of uh, feedback that – we he, they the people wanted him back, and I'm sure the same is going to happen with you, Shane. Anything Fine. else? Anything else that uh, you guys want to add before we wrap this up? I just got to say one thing, okay? So we all play in a dynasty league together, mm-hmm. and we also play with the geek. And I would be remiss. I know Matt's just signed. I have to say, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the geek put us all in our freaking place last year, and he took home mm-hmm. the title. And uh, geek, we're coming for you, baby. We're coming yeah. for you. Yeah, it, we uh, it, again just to give context to the listeners, uh, the the president and CEO of DFS Army, Kevin the Geek, as you all know, who uh, DFS master, uh, w- it, it also didn't tell us that he has some hidden dynasty talents. I brought him into this this passionate league of dynasty players, and he ended up taking down. So no Dave more guys. Williams, man. He had Damian Williams on his team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not anymore. Not okay, anymore. hey, hey, listen, <laughs> I just fleeced, I fleeced Geek. Okay, yeah. Kyler Murray. For Damian Williams, who we were high on for win now, a first round pick this year, which turned into Paris Campbell, and a first round pick next year. I'm coming up, baby. Geek, thank you so much for allowing me to fleece coat you. I know you live in New York. You need that fleece coat, baby. It's cold up there. Yeah, he, and he's going to come on the next podcast with us. He apologizes that he couldn't be here. He was actually traveling down from Montreal today. So coming from your 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 country there, Shane. Love it. Uh, okay, so everyone else knows that we just put out a DFS Army. We put out the, uh, the draft kit. It's there for all subscribers. They can go check out our rankings, Dynasty Redraft. We have articles. We're going to be putting waiver wire pod, uh, podcasts up there uh, with recommended bid amounts. And that's it, guys. Thanks again for coming on the bold call. This will also be simulcast on yours, uh, the Flex Network. And until next time. Thanks, guys. Wait a brother. <laughs>